Trainers, basketball shoes, sneakers, plimsolls, tennis shoes, runners, high tops, whatever you want to call the rubber-soled shoes, they're everywhere. Once confined to the playground and sports fields, they are now in offices, on catwalks, and even in a museum. The show charts a 50-year history, from New York City basketball to these Dior Jordans, worth $15,000. There is a section that looks at how designers have looked at uh, sneakers and kind of pushed them even further beyond their, their, their performance background and their history to becoming these kind of objects of art almost. Different countries, different trainer cultures, from glitz in Japan to low tech for California surfers. It's the preferred shoe around the world. Early shoemakers could never have imagined a trainer worn by the musician Kanye West would one day sell for $1.8 million. $1.8 million for a sneaker seems like an exorbitant sum, but if you put that in the context of great art um, from other mediums, you know, from fine artists, it pales in comparison to the hundreds of millions that people are willing to pay for a painting. New designs ensure there's always a latest must-have, often mass-produced in the developing world very cheaply and sold at a vast profit per pair. It's a perfect recipe for big business. Innovative labs looking for better fit and radical appearance, robots to cut down on cost and waste. There's even a shoe made from mushrooms, designed to decompose quickly, reducing the amount of rubber littering the world's landfills. A small step in the right direction towards sustainability. Jessica Baldwin, Al Jazeera, London.